Tanner, Jack Tanner, Jack Tanner, Tanner, Jack Tanner, Jack Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today I'm going to be showing you how to build an FPV racing drone. So in the previous video, you saw me build this transmitter that had a screen on it that could receive the 5.8 gigahertz signal from the FPV transmitter on the drone. And that was a pretty cool remote controller. And that's what I'm going to be using to be actually controlling this uh, FPV racing drone. So first of all, to get started, these are all the components you're going to need to build this FPV racing drone. And that's not including this uh, FPV receiver and transmitter that you can use to actually fly the drone and see what the drone sees. So what I have here is I have this little mount right here, and this little mount's going to be used to attach my old iPod to the drone, so that way I can get some video. This is the FPV transmitter, as you can see as a little a radio transmitter right here with the camera on this end. I then have this RX module that hooks up to that remote controller that I showed you that I built. And this is what receives the actual signals from the remote to tell what the drone needs to do. I then have four brushless motors, four 20 amp ESCs, four propellers, two clockwise, two counterclockwise. I then have some wires and other things to connect the flight controller to the different parts of the drone. I also have this little connector to connect the drone to the batteries. I then have this frame. Now this is a carbon fiber frame, and carbon fiber is good for making drone frames because it allows you to have this super light frame that's actually super strong. So this is what's going to support and hold all the components that the drone is going to need. I also have some other parts over here, including my flight controller, which is an SP Racing F3, my power distribution module, some screws and nylon spacers and nuts, and some uh, metal spacers and some more metal screws meant for attaching all the circuit boards to the carbon fiber frame and securing everything. I then have some more carbon fiber things for putting the frame together and some zip ties. So this is pretty much all of the parts that make up this drone. And you will also need a battery and some uh, Velcro straps like this. But that's pretty much all. That's not including the tools, so let's start to build this. Now, to build this actual drone, I'm going to start by attaching all of the brushless motors to the drone frame. Okay, so now with the motors, there's different motors that need to go different directions around this uh, quadcopter drone. So for instance, this propeller, or this motor right here, needs to spin counterclockwise. Now, the reason behind this is because of the way the nut is in place. So if we look at this kind of propeller, and we take off the nut and we put it on, then we can see that when this propeller spins counterclockwise, then it spins this way, and it blows down like it's supposed to. But also, because the torque of the orange propeller is going to be opposite the torque of this black motor, as it goes backwards, it's going to be tightening this little cap on. So you want the uh, propeller to spin the opposite direction in which this little top cap is tied on. Now, these black caps that go on the other motors uh, twist on the opposite direction. They twist on lefty tidy, righty loosey, and that's kind of weird, but that makes it so you can make this propeller spin the opposite way. When you're making your drone, you want this propeller and this propeller to spin the opposite directions, because if they don't spin the opposite directions, then there's going to be too much um, torque in one direction, and so that way it'll cause your drone to spin out of control this way, and you don't want that. So you want the propellers to cancel out each other's momentum. I'll proceed to take off this propeller, and install all of the other motors using that same method I did in that first little uh, video clip. Okay, now that all your motors are attached so that they're all opposite of each other, so each one is spinning inward, you can now attach the power distribution module, or this one right here. So I'm just gonna cut that one open and open it up to hook this in. So this little power distribution module needs to go right here on these four screws. 
but it needs to be lifted above the board just a little bit. So we're going to be using some of these parts. And I'll just attach this little power distribution module. All right, now that you have your power distribution module in place, it's time to tin all the little traces of it. Now these traces right here are the ones that go to all the ESCs and the battery. And these take a little while to tin because you have to hold the soldering iron for a little bit and then put some solder on so that way you can get some good tinning action. Now this takes a little longer because you have to heat up all this copper right here. Now after all the solder pads have been tinned, it's time to move on to the next step of building the squad copter. Adding the ESCs, or electronic speed controllers. These speed controllers are what take the DC input from this uh, controller and the battery, and they convert it to a specialized type of driving circuit that can drive these brushless motors. So pretty much it switches the power between putting it here, then putting it here, then putting it here, and it just switches it in a three-phase direction. And that is controlled, that speed is controlled by this little pin that goes to the flight controller. So what we have to do is connect these two positive and negative wires to these traces on the piece of board. And then we also need to connect these three wires to the three wires of the motors. Now because I'd rather not go through the hassle of just using heat shrink tubing and soldering these wires to each other, I'm going to cut off the little bit of heat shrink tubing installation that's on this ESC. I'm going to solder the motor wires directly to the ESC. It'll make everything quite a lot easier. So I'm going to do that right now. So as you can see, what I've done here is I've desoldered all of the old wires from this little ESC, and I've resoldered new wires that go directly to the motor, so we don't have to use any extra heat shrink tubing. I also had to cut off some of the heat shrink tubing around the ESC. Then what I've done is I've attached the ESC wires to the corresponding pads on the power distribution board, with the positives going to the positive pad and the negative wires going to the negative pad. So all these ESCs are wired up, and now it is just time to uh, put them down and zip tie them in place. Then the ESC situation should be almost complete, and all we will have to do is add the flight controller. Okay, so now that all the ESCs are in place and zip tied down, it's time to connect the flight controller board. The flight controller board is what is going to be controlling our motors and all the ESCs. And so right now I'm just going to take these little pins right here, and I'm going to be attaching this piece right here using some solder. Okay, so I kind of forgot to video a lot of my process of wiring this whole drone. So, let me just explain it to you. So right here we have this controller, which receives the signals from the actual remote controller. Then this has two of these little ports that connect up to this board, which is the flight controller. They connect to the two sides of it. This also has power that supplies this little receiver. And it also has power that supplies the actual board going from here. As you can see, there's two wires going from this port to here. So this thing's going to be powered. These four wires that are coming from here, that are going into the, this mess of wires, go to each of the ESCs. So that way, each of the motors can be controlled by each one of these little ports being plugged in. And then over here, we have the FPV cable. And this FPV cable goes over here to the camera. And then we also have two positive and negative wires going from the FPV cable to the positive and negative slots. I've also added this little bullet connector that connects to the negative and positive of this little uh, SP Racing F3 board. So that way it can be powered by an external battery. So that's pretty much what all this mess of wiring is. Oh, and I also forgot, there's also this, which is the VBAT monitor. This measures the voltage of the battery as it's plugged in, so the drone can turn off if the battery gets too low. 
So that's pretty much all of the wires inside here. And everything is a little bit messy at the moment, but that can be easily uh, fixed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slide this little controller, or the little board, right on top of the other one. And make sure this arrow is pointing forward, which is the direction of the the drone. And then I, what I will do is I'll start managing the wires and putting everything together correctly. I'll also add the two or six little metal things that stick up out of the drone so that way they can be connected to the top part of the drone. Okay, so that's this huge mess of wires kind of explained and it kind of makes sense because if you look at this picture that I'm going to show you right here, you can see that each of those pins on each of these little tiny things that plug into the SP Racing F3 go to different channels on the receiver, and those can be set up on the computer after they're plugged in. Okay, so I got a little bit excited when I was building this drone, and instead of videoing the rest of it, I just went ahead and finished building it completely. And so now it actually works really, really well, and it's really fun to fly. So, as you can see, I have all the propellers on here, and they're all tightened on. All the wires are put together. To mount the FPV gear on the drone, I used this little piece of plexiglass, and I bent it to be screwed in the top over here. And then I used that little piece of plexiglass to screw in my antenna into the side, so that way my FPV transmitter can be hidden inside the drone, and this works very well. Alright, so now that you have your drone working, and you have your drone all put together, and everything's hooked up, including the FPV transmitter, the battery, and just about everything else. We can give this drone a little test run. So, I got it hooked up to my transmitter right here, my FPV transmitter. I'll stand back and fire her up. Another cool thing about this drone is the FPV. The FPV is actually pretty cool and you can use it to fly the drone relatively fast. Let's give it a go. Now one cool thing about this drone is the ability to mount a camera on it. So this camera that I'm mounting on it is um, my old iPod Touch 5. And this camera is actually pretty cool and surprisingly works well when mounted on a drone. So I'll just mount this little uh, tripod thing to the bottom of it. And then we'll mount the iPod into the tripod and we'll actually be able to fly the tripod. We'll be able to fly the iPod from the bottom of the drone. Let's connect it. So as you can see, this iPod is on the bottom of the drone. It makes it a little bit heavier, but the drone can still carry its load. Not for very long, though. Okay, so this iPod on here is pretty cool, and you can fly this around and get some really cool video in 1080p from the iPod. Now, the only reason I'm using the iPod is because I don't have any other uh, recording device that can fit on this that's small enough. So this will have to do for now. Let's take it up.
is how you build a drone. Now the cool thing about this drone is I didn't build it from a kit and I didn't buy it pre-built. I had to go and find all the separate parts and make sure that they would work together and then buy them and put them together to make this drone. And the cool thing is it cost $150. So in a different video, I'm going to go through how this drone works and how to build one using the software called Clean Flight, which is actually used to program this drone. And I'll probably also put some links to the parts in the description because I can make it for pretty cheap. So make sure to comment if you want another video showing how this drone works and like how all the different electronic components interact and how everything is wired and how clean flight can be programmed to make your drone do lots of different things. So stay tuned for that and thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time. Okay.